Hi guys, welcome back. Domain 4 Identity and Access Management Configuring Radius Practice Lab. <coughs> lab recommends Windows Server 2012 Auto Domain Controls, Windows Server 2012 Auto Domain Member Server, Windows Server 2012 Standalone Server, and then Workstations. If you, if you guys have a latest versions, Windows 2016 uh, or Windows 10 Workstation, you guys can uh, use it for this test environment. So, that's for the lab. So we're going to see how to install and configure network policy server, how to install and configure remote access server, configure the VPN client, viewing the NPS log. So the first task we are going to see task task ones, uh, install and configure network policy servers. So under this under the task we are going to uh, perform the four tasks: how to add a standalone server to domain. And then how to install network policy server NPS, configure network policy server, or configure network policy server logs. Okay. So uh, normally the network administrators deploy remote access server RAS that queue mobile users the capability to tail up and connect to corporate resources like folders, files, and applications. For scalability, network managers add more RAS servers and deploy a mode uh, deploy a uh, modern pool to accommodate more Dell del in users. However, the infrastructure upgrade will require more resource to be spent for the hard hardware, long distance call charging, and toll free uh, toll free telephone services. A company may opt to outsource outsource their remote access service to a third party to save on telephone charge, but there is a security risk of entrusting and managing your dial-up user account to an external organization like ISP. Fortunately, the program of managing users account and security can be addressed with the use of virtual private network and remote access, uh, remote authentication daily in user services radius. So virtual private networks makes use, uh, makes use of an existing internet connection to connect the corporate network resources. Therefore, a user can be located anywhere in the virtual uh, in in the world, and be able to gain access to the network resource by using the internet and then connecting to the VPN server. While Radius uh, Radius provides a, cert, a centralized infrastructure for authentications of daily VPN users, authentications for access of network resource, account the number of minutes daily user spends in remote access uh, remote session. Okay, so anyway, in the ex in this task, we, we we will see how to install network policy, which is a Microsoft implementation of Radius protocol. Uh, you will you will not configure dial up remote access server, but install install and set up a VPN server based on Microsoft routing and remote access services. Okay, so this is a standalone server. So we are going to perform the step. Or uh, we are starting this from standalone server. So here I'm going to open the Windows PowerShell. So I'm going to add the Ethernet and setting up the DNS <coughs> DNS IP for that. So this is a DNS IP. So the command sets a 192.168.0.1 as the DNS server. Uh, for for standalone, so please note that uh, this IP address is refers to the domain control. Okay, so this is a domain control IP address. So the DNS on uh, on this uh, lab uh, practice lab domain, uh, we 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 might we are going to see the mig migrating the server to uh, this DNS server facilitates its integration into practice lab domain. Okay, anyway. So we have successfully added the Ethernet and setting up the IP address. Uh, so we're going to add the computer.
so this is a case sensitive how to make sure so when you enter okay so now added successfully so we are going to restart the computer now so so okay sorry there is a small mistake okay okay the machine is restarted now the standalone server so we are going to open the windows powershell so we are going to add the uh, nps npas So the first task uh, we have successfully added uh, P, uh, the server, the standalone server to domain. So we are now doing the second task, uh, installing network uh, network policy server. Okay. So using these commands, we have now successfully added, installed. So we can now exit. They are going to see the third com third task: configure network policy service. Okay. Okay, let's go for this. I'll just minimize this, and then go to the sub uh, server manager. So, on the server manager, tools, uh, network policy server. So, on the network policy server, it, it will open. It will take some time. So here you can see the reduced client right so you can just expand this and then just highlight on right click so here just click proceed new so here we're going to give your name the host name host name of domain member server on domain uh, sorry on standalone server so we are doing this on the standalone server okay so we're going to enter the domain member server host name So and then IP address of this. So here the password. Secret shared secret. Okay, now you can just verify it. So res resolve it. So it is now added here. So there you go. And then click advance. So you have to enable these options. Uh, access request so this option is a very important so just proceed click OK so now we have uh, completed the configure network policy service we are now going to see configure network policy server logs okay so normally in the task uh, we will we will configure the property of network policy server net network policy server accounting logs on standalone server okay on this server so the logs presents important information about the authentication of users who sign into the network through the through a VPN connection. So we will be inter uh, interpreting these logs uh, in a later on exercise. So so let's go for it. So just click the accounting. There you have to click a change logs file. So there you have to click a log file. So just change your IAS legacy and then daily just please click OK so we have now successfully completed the task one okay so successfully added successfully installed the NPS uh, configured successfully you know NPS and configured NPS locks okay so now we are going to see uh, task 2 how to install and configure remote access server so we will see one by one how to prepare the VPN interface everything okay so for this uh, we need to connect uh, domain member server we have to switch back to the connect members uh, domain member server so uh, we will we will 
now install and then set up a mo uh, Microsoft routing and remote access services which will provide a virtual virtual private network server okay so on the domain member server so this is a domain member server you're going to see that how to prepare the first task prepare the VPN interface okay so normally after configuring the NPS servers and creating an NPS clients we need to prepare the VPN server on the domain member server to enable the VPN connections so we will we will see how to assign the static IP address and the preferred DNS to Ethernet to the second interface on domain member server so this setting prepared domain member server as a VPN interface on the practice lab domain so open the PowerShell so we're going to use this command interface IP set so set IP address okay so then name equal to Ethernet to static 192.168 this is a IP so yeah, this is a static IP we're setting up for Ethernet 2 so we have now successfully configured the second the second interface will act as a VPN servers public interface which will receive incoming connection from VPN client so we will now add the DNS so this is for DNS Ethernet 2 and static 192.168.0.1 okay okay let's wait for it so we have now successfully uh, once it's done okay it's almost done okay so so we have now uh, successfully completed the first task or prepare the VPN interface we are now going to see install remote access services okay so to enable the VPN connections the remote access service RAS must be installed on the VPN server so we will see how to install RAS on the domain member servers the, the server configured as a VPN interface so for that on the same domain member server so we're going to perform we're going to enter this uh, command to add the RAS remote access so direct accesses and then VPN routing iPhone include management tools okay so it's now started installing uh, so you can see here we have to wait for some time the process is going on now so once it's verified the successful installation of our feature so we will just uh, go to the next step okay okay it's done successfully so we have now completed the second task we are going to see initialize remote access management so after installing RAS so we will now start initialize the service so on the same member server domain member server we have to open the server manager so on the server manager go to tools remote access management so here so just click the direct access on VPN and then click run the remote access setup and then deploy VPN only so here you can just right click and then configure enable next here just leave it default next 
So here I have to select VPN only, next. And then here just clear this uh, box, and then next. So here I have to click the second from the specific range of IP address. So going to enter this IP address. 10 dot 10, sorry. Ten dot zero dot hundred ten dot ten one twenty. So you can see number of address is twenty one. Just click OK. Next. So here how to select this? Yes, set up this option. So here if so just give the host name, host name of standalone. So if you have a secondary, uh, I mean the alternate or uh, radius server, so you can uh, add it. So finish. So it will take some time. So you can see here is now okay. It's open now. So we have now successfully uh, done the third task. We are going to see how to configure authentication on accounting providers. So for that, just right click properties. So here in the security. So just click the configure here edit always use message authentication click OK click OK ok so then the same process you have to do accounting provider configure edit send click OK so take some time click OK so now we go to the IP version 4 and then so just make sure uh, enable so this for this Ethernet 2 is enabled okay it's done already okay so now uh, we have done successfully the fourth task configuring authentication accounting provider so we're going to see configuring the VPN ports so for that here just right click properties so here the PPP, PPTP configure so here you can just remove this and then set up the IP address One ninety two. 168.0.20 the static IP address what we added before so how to do the same thing on L2TP remove this 192.168.0.20 click OK apply OK so we have we have now done the fifth task so we're going to see how to specify specify the VPN adapter okay so for that so go back here so you can just right click properties so we have already uh, performed this but we just want to double check so this is the one so Ethernet 2 so you always set to Ethernet 2 so that is very important I just want to double check with this so the last task we are going to see seventh grant VPN daily permissions to, to enable a user to set up VPN connections you must grant the user the permission to uh, daily into the VPN server so note 
please note that uh, to grant such rights to user on a domain you must have administ administrator administ administrative rights on the domain so we will see how to uh, grant the daily permission to administrator account to domain control on on domain control okay so for that we need to switch to domain control so this is a domain member servers we are going to make the domain control so this is a domain control so here you open the server manager so once you open the server manager okay here go to the administrative sorry active directory users and computers okay so here just click the users and then administrator right click properties so here daily just allow this option select allow access apply okay so now we have down so we have successfully done task 2 so we will we will see the next task so the next task the task 3 configure the VPN clients so, so under the uh, task 3 so we're going to perform how to configure secondary IP address for VPN client so after installing uh, and configuring routing and remote access in domain member server we need to prepare a, a windows 8 you know windows workstation client to daily into the vpn server so for that we need to connect a windows 8 workstation so this is a windows 8 machine so here i'm going to open powershell So always run as administrator. So this is the command we are going to. Okay, net such interface IP set address. 92.168.0.50 okay and then there is a small mistake ethernet 2 so ethernet 2 So there is a small mistake again. There's a space between there. Uh, 192.168. Sorry, I didn't add the static. So because we are setting up the IP address static, we are uh, setting up the static IP address on Ethernet 2. Right? So now is added successfully because this is this is set this command is sets a static IP address on Ethernet 2 network interface okay so to set up the Ethernet 2 use a domain control as its preferred DNS so what we did on the domain member server so that doing the same thing net as such interface IP set DNS okay DNS Ethernet to static 192. Dot your DNS IP address. Okay. Now we have successfully configured secondary IP address for VPN client. So we are going to see how to create VPN client tailor okay so for that open the open network sharing center click the set up a new connection here connect to workplace next here use the first one use my network use my internet VPN connection so just let's 
wait for a few minutes okay so here you have to uh, give your IP address the static IP address okay so then you have to enable this option create let's wait for some time okay now you can see the practice lab EPN connection is added so let's open the change adapter here so right click on it properties so here sorry So here, properties, so here the security tab, click these options, allow this protocol, okay, and then networking, properties, advanced, I have to remove this option then click OK OK and then click OK so we can now just click connect and device show here click connect options so here we have to enter the password okay so it's let's wait for it so it's connecting okay it's added successfully so here we can now completed successfully uh, created we, we have created the VPN client dialer successfully so we are going to check the status of VPN connection okay so once VPN connection is set up we need we can check the status of status to understand the protocol being implemented for the connections and the IP address involved in supporting the connections okay so here so just click uh, the status here right click status so we can see the, see, uh, the client IP version 4 101 and then 100 so everything so that's it for task 3 so let's go for the task 4 so the task 4 uh, how viewing the NPS logs so under the task force we are going to see examine the NPS uh, so now so when when 8.1 I mean the Windows 8.1 connects to the VPN servers uh, be it successful uh, successful or failed logon you can view the details of the VPN connection by reading the NPS logs using the third-party logs read okay so task one let's examine first we're going to examine the NPS logs so uh, and NPS logs are generated when the VPN clients makes a successful or failed connection to the VPN server so to create the the create the created log files are in or in commas separated value not SCV format okay so for that we need to connect the standalone server so we are going to connect it so this is a standalone server so here we can just close say this one open the Explorer and then Windows so here the system 32 so Windows local C Windows system 32 and then log file okay so here 
we can see here so this this logs you can see here i end the date is 20 uh 2010 20, i mean year 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 month month date date so this format okay yymmdd so let's press yeah five so you can see the zero kb here Just press the refresh button. Okay, now you can see here two KB here. When you, when you press the refresh button, you can see here two KB. So anyway, so let's open it. Just double click, open it. You can see here. You can see here. So in the Notepad, it displays on a NPS logs. You can notice here the log the content enter enter that you will not able to understand for the reason so you will need you will, you will need an NPS log reader to 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 be able to understand the content of the logs file okay so you can you can also google it uh, there is a website you know there's a link uh, you can you can you can google it to find how to read this NPS log file so you will get more information uh, technet.microsoft.com.en this is one of the best uh, link cc7717484 v called ws so you can you can visit this uh, uh, link exact exact link you will get more information on this so anyway uh, the task one is completed so now we are going to see install tools to read the NPS logs so you need a software tool such as uh, NPS logs readers or IAS right to read uh, to read and understand NPS logs so let's let's we can download now so, okay so before that so let's open the local server so just scroll down and then here you can just disable this internal IE enhanced just going to so going to turn off this because you will get a message every time so in the Google so you can just type IAS viewer free download so you get that IAS uh, logs viewer I have already uh, downloaded the the version so this is the IES viewer so you guys can also google it and download the best one extract so here just double click setup next so accept next next so just leave it as default settings default locations so we can just click next and install then finish okay so now We can check here the logs IAS log viewer. So here, just select the file, click OK view. So you can you can now see here. So details of the var various connections attempts, uh, user IP. So uh, the connection. In the connect tabs you can see here so this connect tabs you can see here so this is very useful the very useful piece of information so let's go to the properties so for that right click item details so here you can see the list of 
all the informations you know the stop date and start date everything so anyway so we have now uh, completed the read the logs read the NPS logs the last one we are going to see export NPS template okay so if there is a more than one NPS because here at least here it, you can see only one if there is more than one NPS servers on the network you can create files with similar format across the server so you can archive archive this uh, by exporting template from one server to another so this save you to uh, the effort of redefining the template of each server okay so just close it just go to the server manager on the standalone server we are doing this uh, task on standalone server so on the same server so we are just go to the tools network NPS network policy server so it takes some time yeah and then here the template management right click it export template so here just name it anything p labs you just give a name anything and then system 32 so you can just save it so now we go to the explorer on uh, the system 32 here we can check the plabs so plabs what we created earlier so here just right click <coughs> excuse me open with notepad so here the details of stored templates are display in the notepad file so you, you can use this file to create more files on the same template okay so that's it guys for this labs we have successfully uh, completed the task 4 so we have uh, in this lab you guys can uh, understand enjoy enjoy the lab so what we what we discussed in this lab so install network policy servers of Microsoft radius uh, configure VPN ports are viewing the NPS logs so this is this this is a uh, uh, very very useful information for those working on the real-time uh, platform so uh, please subscribe my channel uh, I'll post more video the practice labs and later on videos guys please subscribe my channel uh, press the bell button to get more update share the video if you like